Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining. My name is Faison, the <clears throat> Marketing Manager at MindFlash, and welcome to How to Build Online Training Content for Real Estate Software Applications. We really felt like it was a great need for real estate agents and a great challenge that they face to constantly be updated on the latest software applications and updates. So we want, really wanted to focus in on the best practices and tips how to train on the subject matter. <laughs> we have a lot of great content for you all, so let's go ahead and get started. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Jen Scopo. She has a master's in industrial organizational psychology. She's been training in the field for 14 years and she's been a MindFlash customer. Uh, and lastly, she's been a licensed realtor in Arizona for Keller Williams. So without further ado, Jen, show them what you got. The floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Faison. I appreciate it. Uh, like Faison said, welcome, guys. We appreciate you being here and taking some time out of your day. I don't plan on taking a lot of time. I really just want to highlight a few really important mindsets and tactics for when you move forward and are looking to build software training into a um, LMS online training system. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into that today. Our ultimate goal is to effectively train your learners on operating software using an online system. To do that, we're going to talk about some of the challenges that you'll need to overcome I always find it helpful to look at the big picture, determine what the obstacles may be, and put as many proactive solutions in place as possible. So we're gonna start there. Then we're gonna look at various mediums, from basic to advanced, so wherever your skill set and experience may lie, I'm going to give you solutions to help you overcome those challenges in a way that hopefully suits your experience, expertise, and the time constraint within which you're working. Then we're gonna take that information and look specifically at how you can leverage some course features directly in the MindFlash system to follow up on your training and make it more robust and dynamic. And we'll wrap up with some bonus solutions, just a few extra things you can do regardless of which solution you put into place. And my intention is for all of this to take no more than 20 to 30-ish minutes at most. Like Faison said, if you have questions that are clarifying along the way and you need me to re-explain something that just didn't make sense the first time, please hit that raise hand button and I'd be happy to clarify any points. Otherwise, I'll open the floor to any questions you may have at the end. So you'll see a poll question pop up on your screen right now. And I like to start with this question with pretty much whoever the audience is. So it gives you guys, it gives me rather an opportunity to identify just who I'm working with, what your experience may be, so I can inc uh, increase my pace, slow things down, or reiterate things that I may not otherwise if you guys are just jumping into training. So I will give you a few more seconds to go ahead and answer that question. And as soon as those results are back to me, we can move in with an idea of who we have on the phone today. And it looks like everyone we have on the call today, unless I'm reading this backwards on that tiny little screen in there, is experience in training. Sweet, I love that. I love what I'm talking to my people and you guys are ready to jump in the same way I do. And if you didn't get a chance to answer and you're not experienced in rocking it, don't worry, we'll get through it together. All right. Back over to our slide. Let's start, like I promised, with challenges to overcome. So since you guys have a lot of experience in training, I'm sure this is something you build into your process as a normal step, right? You're looking to see, here's what we're looking to achieve. Here's the best ways we think we can achieve it. But here are some of the issues we may run into. So how can we avoid them on the front end? And what solutions should we have in place on the back end if those weren't sufficient enough? So let's start with our first one. Straight out there, right in your face, software is boring. Training on a computer software is perhaps the most boring training that anyone can participate in, right? You're sitting there watching someone else click through a screen, explain the little pieces along the way and how features work. And unless you're really into software and like write code and things, and if you are, I don't mean to offend you. The rest of us are not on that page with you you're having this challenge from the beginning, right? They open their course and they're like, okay, this is computer training. 
And their brain automatically prepares itself to just take in some mundane basic information. So that's the first thing to overcome is we have to find ways to make it dynamic, interesting, and engaging where we're constantly hitting that reset button and getting their brain re-engaged, refocused, and really taking in that information. With any training, trainees usually experience fatigue especially online because your eyes are straining. You are constantly focusing on a screen that's backlit. And I'm sure you guys know this in, you know, the past, I don't know, I guess decades now, we're looking at a plural there, that the more time you spend in front of a computer, the more your eyes struggle. I had perfect 2020 vision until I started working in an office and all of a sudden I needed glasses a year later. So their eyes are not only straining, it actually sometimes causes headaches and just makes their body tired overall. So we want to do everything in our power to make what they're looking at as easy to see, as vibrant as it can be, and change up the visuals that are in front of them. So it does give their eyes a better opportunity to not feel so exhausted. Next up, there are so many details. Anytime you participate in any training where you're down to the nitty gritty and it's not the big picture, it's not the theory or a concept to understand, it's a very specific, here's this process, here's where you find things, here's your exact click path, that's simply just challenging to take in. So you need to build in ways where you can reinforce those details, make sure they're absorbing them as best as possible, and that you're explaining them in a way that make as much sense as possible in the beginning so they have a better chance of understanding. Our next challenge is that there's often a lack of immediate application, right? All of you know from being in training that as much as trainees may groan about it, role play is vital. So you got the information, you understand it, you think you can do it. Well, now let's put your feet to the fire and see if you can do it. And being able to jump right in from concept and watching someone else to doing it really gives you a great sense of what you learned, where you're naturally talented and what you were naturally able to absorb and where you need to focus in order to improve your skill set and your knowledge. Training with a software system online or even in person doesn't usually give you an opportunity to immediately apply what you've learned, which means there's a greater chance, a significantly greater chance that that information is going to drain right out of their brains as soon as they step away from the computer or walk out of the classroom. So we're going to talk today when we get to those bonus solutions about maybe some ways you can do that and have them apply in the moment. Our next challenge is looking at a really small screen. Now, if you're training when your trainers rather, or let me start over. When your trainees, the people you're trying to teach this information to, set their expectations that when it comes to these courses on software and technology, they need to find time to be in front of a large tablet, a PC, a laptop. And if they're intending on doing this on their phone, this is going to be a challenge regardless of what learning software you're using, right? It's simply too hard to follow those details. It puts even more fatigue on their eyes. They have no opportunity to apply the information unless they're literally learning a mobile version of technology but it makes it really difficult and makes a lot of the challenges we just talked about even more so. So that's an expectation that I like to set with any person I work with on helping build their content. When it comes to software, expect them to have to be at a computer, even if the rest of what they're doing is on their phones, because it will cause frustration for them. And I find it's better to put it out there in the beginning. And finally, our last challenge is that when you're training on technology, there is a significant varied learning pace with the people you have in your room. And it's really difficult beyond even any other scope of content that you're training on to keep the whole group moving forward as effectively and efficiently as possible. You often have people in the room who are really uncomfortable with technology and are going to take two and three times as long to get through the steps that you're showing and other people who it's really second nature and they barely need the explanation to do it. This is where online training is hugely beneficial because the information is there for them and they can go through as quickly or as slowly as they need to to make sure that everyone's learning the information. All right, keeping all of that information in mind, we're going to start jumping into some of these solutions. 
So like I mentioned, keep those challenges in your head of what we're trying to overcome. And we're gonna look at a basic solution, an intermediate and advanced. The way that I determined these levels is on these three factors you see on your screen. The ease of learning and using the program through which you have to create the solution. So PowerPoint, for example. The average length of time it takes to create the solution I'm going to introduce to you and the efficiency of making updates. Right? With any content, it's important to be able to go back in and adjust things as things change, especially in terms of technology, because they tend to change so quickly. So those are what these levels are based on, and we're going to jump right in with our basic. And our basic solution is screenshots. And that's exactly what it sounds like, that you, as the creator, open up your software and you take screenshots of every step along the way. And bonus points, if you put some bubbles and text directions and numbers on the screen, and if you voice it over, it may look like something as simple as this. <clears throat> if you're teaching someone to order lunch, one of my favorite things to do on just about any day, and you introduce them to the Grubhub site, you're assuming you've taught them a few steps of how to get to where they are. You see a screenshot of, what part of the step they're up to. And there's a little box on the bottom that explains a little bit more clearly as to what's supposed to happen next. <clears throat> Excuse me, I live in Arizona. We've had four dust storms this week, so my voice is going in and out. That's a real thing here, dust storms. All right, so you have your screenshot here. You have your box on the bottom that shows you exactly what they're doing. Let's look at some of the pros and cons of this particular solution. So on the pro side, it's really easy to zoom in and enlarge. So when you're taking that screenshot, you can crop your image, you can make it much bigger, you can make it pretty much the size of the screen if you needed to, <clears throat> excuse me, so they can see exactly what they're looking at and have a much better image as opposed to trying to see your entire computer screen on theirs. You can focus point by point. It's really simple to create. You literally go through the steps, hit that print screen button on your keyboard, paste the image into your PowerPoint slide, and then you can crop and adjust and add the pieces to it. It's also really easy for them to follow. Since it's really big, you have the boxes on the screen explaining some of the steps. You may have numbers and circles pointing things out. It gives them a really clear process and they can see things a lot more easily. Now, on the con side, this can feel really tedious to create. You're hitting print screen, you're pasting, you're cropping, you're adding some shapes and text boxes, and then you're going back and doing it over. Once you get into the groove and you've done a few slides, you do naturally start to move a little faster, but it's not the most entertaining thing you're going to do all day. It's also very one-sided training. They're hearing you talk, they're seeing your images, they don't have an opportunity to interact with it, and they're just getting the information thrown at them. It is simple to edit and update. I'm sorry, I don't know why that's on the con side, that's a pro. It is very simple to get in there and update this on the back end when you have technology to go ahead and fix, because it's really easy. You go to that one step exactly where the change has happened, you can make that one change to that one slide and not have to make wholesale adjustments. Let's see if this is a pro or a con. Okay, this is also a pro. I'm not sure how these move today. My animation's a little bit weird. It's really easy to see this on a mobile device. They can see exactly what the information is. It, they have, if they chose to train that way, despite all of your warnings of how hard it's going to be to see, because you can zoom in and you can add those boxes and really highlight pieces, it's really easy for them. So again, since this is wonky, the pros are that it's easy to zoom in, simple to create, easy for them to follow, simple for you to edit and update, and easy to see on that mobile device. So it's just these top two that are your cons for this one. Our next solution is our intermediate. And this solution is you recording your screen. This involves using software like Zoom or GoToMeeting, whatever video or webinar software you're comfortable with. And you're going to go in and actually go through the steps of how to use the software. There are several steps I'm going to list on your screen right now, but they're all pretty easy and straightforward. First, open your webinar software. Start your webinar like you normally would. Share your screen to show just the content that you want visible, just the application. 
that you want them to be able to see. Hit record. I have made this mistake on several occasions. Forget to actually hit that important record button in the beginning. So make sure you hit that. The recording saves for you at the end. Make sure you know where it's saved, if it's on your computer or your cloud. Go in and trim the video if needed. So if in the beginning while you're getting set, I like to turn it on and hit record immediately. And then I just have to go in and trim the beginning part of the video of the awkward silence or me talking to myself as I'm getting things set up. And then when you build your course, you upload it as a video. So they're gonna get the full start to finish right there in that video. All right, now let's look at the pros and cons for this one and uh, let's hope these are in the right column. Your pros are that it's a really clear step-by-step -step explanation. You are physically going through the motions and you're verbally explaining what's happening. So it's as realistic as you can get to doing this in person. It's really easy to create as you're, again, just going through the motions, hitting record. And it's really easy for the trainees to follow. On the con side, you need to either be able to complete this in one take or be able to easily edit a completed video. So since you're recording your screen as if it were in real time, all of the side rambling I've done on this video, on this webinar right now, if I chose to do this in one take, all of that's gonna live on forever in that video, very much like this webinar that's being recorded. You can, however, when you recognize that you've made a mistake, take a breath, pause for about two or three seconds, and then redo that part of it. You just have to be able to put it into video software and cut out the pieces you don't want. Again, it's still one-sided training. And it can be hard to update if you're not comfortable editing video. That if you have to go back and make a change, you're either going to need to redo the entire thing, or if you are comfortable editing the video, you can just go in, redo that one portion, and then cut and paste the original video to make it one whole piece again. All right, that is solution number two, intermediate. This is a lot of me rambling at you, very much like a person learning how to use computers. So hopefully this is giving you a second to process. And let's move on to our advanced solution, which are interactive tutorials. Now these are typically created in an authoring tool that creates SCORM content. You may be familiar with SCORM content if you've either created it or built it in the past. But this is software that can be pretty difficult to use if you're not computer savvy and you're not really comfortable with it. But at the end, it creates a recorded screen exactly like the recorded screen we just talked about. And it gives you an opportunity to turn that recorded screen into an interactive tutorial. So it takes your voice out, it takes your clicks out, and it lets the trainee right there on that screen, right in their course, click and follow the exact path you did, and you can set it to prompt them when they're wrong, give them hints, that type of thing. Some pros of this, it first of all has all the pros of the recorded webinar, and it's a hands-on experience for the trainee. And this is the first time we're seeing this in any of these solutions is it's the only one that overcomes that challenge of the lack of immediate application. So you're able to jump in and let your trainee apply it hands on right there without even having the software open on their computer, even if it's software that you have on your proprietary location that they normally have to access on site. They're still able to do this tutorial from wherever they're taking their training. On the con side, the software to create such materials requires a subscription 100% of the time from my research. If you found something different, please tell me. And it's often expensive compared to having your office suite and being able to use PowerPoint and have video software and that type of thing. This is a separate software. Again, it can be challenging to use if you're not familiar with it or extremely comfortable with technology and creation of this manner. And it can be potentially time consuming to update. Since it is a little bit challenging to complete on the front end, in order to go in and update it, it's also going to be challenging to do that. And you're going to have to do the whole thing over. You're going to have to record the whole screen from start to finish, since it's not a video that you're going in and editing. And finally, this is the absolute hardest to use on a mobile device because your clicks have to be so specific and so clear and accurate that it can immediately become very frustrating when they're not able to do that. All right, take a breath. We are through the 
solutions and you have another poll question popping up on your screen so you guys can click over to that as soon as it pops up this is really just an initial kind of off the bat where are you kind of at right now do you think the screenshots are going to suit you the recorded webinars the interactive tutorials there's no rhyme or reason to this it's just me giving you a chance to immediately apply information and kind of your gut reaction of where you're feeling this right now all right and uh, right now it's looking like everyone is at the screenshots that is a very common place for people to land at this point because it is so simple to do it's easy on mobile and it's easy to create and if you changed your mind at some time great like i said this was just an opportunity to kind of see where you were in this moment so clicking back over to our um, powerpoint slide there it goes now we're going to see some ways that regardless of which solution, so if you all stick with your idea of I'm going to do these screenshots, please, seems pretty simple, straightforward, it's going to hit the mark. Regardless of if you change that or not, there are features built into your MindFlash course creator where you can really just enhance what you're showing them and give them extra opportunities to learn. We're going to look specifically as to how you can utilize quizzes and surveys for this. And this will be a pretty quick explanation. For quizzes, there are several different types of question. The one that I'm choosing to highlight right now is a sequencing question. So you'll see I'm showing you in the creator of what it would look like. The question is, drag and drop the words below to indicate the correct click path to send an email. And me as the creator, I put it in in order. First, you click compose enter a to address, enter a subject, et cetera, et cetera. I'm pretty sure we all know how to send emails. And you put this in here as to exactly what the click path is. So make sure you have your notes and don't miss anything for them. And then when it shows this question to your trainee, it's going to scramble those. So even though they're not getting into the software in that moment and doing it, it is giving them an opportunity to apply and test their retention by having to do pretty much the same thing just without looking at their specific screen. There are a ton of ways you can do this with the other question types, with the true, false, the multiple choice, that type of thing. This is just the most straightforward one that I thought would be a great sample for you. You can also use your surveys. I tend to use surveys a lot more for retention of information than I do for actually rating the effectiveness of the course. And for this survey, I did, did an open text question of simply stating, use the space below to explain the process of creating a new listing in our software. So it's the same exact concept, except they're having to pull it from their brain. They don't have the prompt in front of them of right here are the steps. So here's the order they go in. It forces them to take it one step further in their learning and be able to actually regurgitate it on their own. So there's just a really short sampling of some of the ways the features built directly in MindFlash can really help you make this training more dynamic and therefore less boring and more easily applicable. All right, we are down to our last section. I put my phone away so it didn't make any noises. So I have no idea how we're doing on time, but we're just gonna power through this, only take a minute. Here are some bonus solutions. So regardless of which creation option you choose, the basic, intermediate, advanced, these would apply to all of them. The first one is to attach a step-by-step -step handout. Every course in MindFlash gives you the opportunity to have a handout attached to it that they can access from the intro slide, the end slide, or right there on the home page of the course before they're even in there. Simply writing out a step-by-step, -step, here's how you compose an email, here's how you create your listing, here's how you start your drip campaign to your clients. Whatever it is, giving them that same step-by-step -step that was in the course that they can easily refer to. Extra bonus points for the bonus solution include screenshots in that handout. So if you chose the to still do the screenshot solution, this is really easy. Paste the screenshot into PowerPoint, simultaneously paste it into Word, and keep making those in tandem. And at the end, you have written out step-by-step -step instructions for them with screenshots that they can refer to after they've seen that exact same thing on the computer screen. Hugely important for their retention, and especially your visual learners, which is most people that you're training. Third bonus solution, voice over as much as you can. Put as many things in there as you can of you explaining, giving them the background, giving them some information. Eventually they may be tired of hearing your voice and they'll power through. It'll be just fine. 
when I was a client for MindFlash and I created all the course content for my entire franchise, they hear my voice for probably a total of about 150 hours at minimum. And at the end of the day, it gets them through and it helps them process the information because it's as realistic as it can be to having someone in front of you, especially with all these minute details. And the last tip is to add an away from the computer step, really creative cryptic way of saying, give them something on the screen that tells them to step away from the screen and go do something. In this case, they wouldn't necessarily step away from the computer, but it would give them a checklist that says, okay, exit out of this course, open up blah, blah, blah software, and follow the steps to create your listing. And it's going to show them the opportunity to really go through and then jot down, oh, I actually didn't retain any of this, so I need to go click back through. Now, can you guarantee that they do this? Absolutely not. Unless they're training in front of you in the office and you tell them it's an important thing to do, but then that's on them. You're giving them the opportunity to apply, to retain, and to learn on a higher level that's going to make this information a lot more applicable. Okay, as promised, that was the last piece I will ramble at you. So I will give you guys a few seconds. I haven't seen anyone's hand raised. So either I was really clear in that information, it really meant nothing to you, or you've been scrolling through your Facebook feed this whole time. Regardless, I'm gonna give you a couple of extra seconds to pop up any questions you may have that we can address for you. And otherwise, I will let you guys continue on with your day. So, um, phase on the questions pop up for you. So, yep, go for it. Yeah, I got I got a few for you. Um, so one one was, what are some tools you can use to create interactive tutorials? Oh, some of the authoring tools. There's Correct, a yeah. bunch of different ones that I'm probably not going to be able to list out all off the top of my head. Um, Adobe has a couple of them. There is Storyline 360. There is the one that starts with an R that I'm blanking out on. Um, let me, Faison, do you guys have that, do you have that listed someplace from the ones that I know that are yeah, approved? Think, There's a bunch of them yeah. that build in pretty easily. Right. And we have a few that, you know, we're integrated with as well. Even Articulate Rise is another one. That was the um, R. There so, you go. Yeah, that was it. So, cool. <laughs> and that's the one that I use. So it's great that I couldn't come up with that name. Maybe I've blocked it out. <laughs> So there's a lot of them. If you were to research SCORM authoring tool, it's going to pop up. Probably the first five results in Google will show you what some of the main ones are. And if you are a MindFlash customer or choosing to be in the future, your person that you work with when you first get started will be able to give you a list of exactly the ones that integrate directly into the system. So you're not creating in something that wouldn't be beneficial to you. Great question, though. Any other ones pop up? Awesome. Yes. Uh, how would you track what type of content is most effective for your members? That's a great question. I would use, I would create a separate course and just use the survey feature would to literally send a survey out to anyone who's completed the original course and let them rate it, let them give you open-ended feedback. That would be the way that I would look for direct feedback, but I would also keep a close pulse on the data that comes through from the course. So using all of your reporting features, if you have a course, now in this case, you would have to have, you know, one that's a screenshot, one that's a recorded webinar, or just look at the effectiveness of the one you've created. So let's say that you think this course should take about 30 minutes and you look in your reports and you're seeing that average completion time is over an hour. There's a couple of things to assess. Either you way underestimated or it's way harder to follow than you anticipated it being and it's taking them a lot longer. When you build in the quizzes and stuff, look at the quiz pass rate, look at the questions that people are getting wrong most often, and all of that type of data and research using your reporting features on the back end is going to give you a really great insight into where you need to recreate something, rephrase a quiz question, or just make something different and more impactful, and where it's an error on the part of your users. So using all that data, or creating that survey course will be a great way to really keep a pulse on the effectiveness and the efficiency so you can make some adjustments in real time. So that is all for today. Uh, thank you so much, Jen. I really appreciate it. It was wonderful content. Sure. I hope you all learned very well. And uh, that is all. Hope you have a wonderful day. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.